Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. It's a very, very difficult time right now. I really feel for the New Yorkers and people in these condensed areas where they're just dropping like flies. And I feel for the hospitals that aren't getting the ventilators they're supposed to get. Well, I want you to know that God knows. He knows and he sees. And I think one good prayer for us to pray as born again, God's believers, we need to be in agreement that God will bring extreme judgment on the perpetrators of all this worldwide crime that's going on against God's people, against those of you who have been victimized. I pray that God brings judgment on the ones who have started this, that he exposes them, and that every one of us gets to experience the promise of the Bible that says the wealth of the wicked will be laid up for the just. This is the perfect time for that to happen. But we pray for your healing in Jesus' name. Now, This is what I want to read from James chapter 5, starting from verse 1 to 8. First, he addresses those that are evil, wickedness in high places. And then he addresses his people. So I hope you find comfort in this. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasures together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Well, this is what God has to say to his people. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. He's on his way. Don't lose heart. Some of you will graduate ahead of your class, which means... Through hook or crook, some of you may end up in heaven within the next few days. But know that you will not want to come back here once you're there. That's one comforting thought. And remember what the Bible says. For those of you who are on your deathbed, death, where is your sting? Grave. Where is your victory? You don't have to feel the sting of death. And I pray that for those of you who are on your way out, then you can barely catch your breath, that through God's mercy, he will raise you up and heal you instantly or slip you into a merciful, restful coma where you are no longer even aware of your body's struggles. And then you just wake up in heaven, in God's presence, to behold the beauty of the Lord. Mm. Okay. Now, I just want to share this with those of you. I'm fighting this, y'all. I'm really fighting. Fighting the tears. Um, Trying to keep myself together. Okay. For those of you who are getting angry. For those of you who are frustrated because seemingly the evil just gets away with murder, literally, 
They constantly get away with murder and they constantly get richer and richer. Yes. But you have to remember their reward is here on the planet. Your reward is eternal. Always. Their punishment, oh my goodness, for all they put people through, intensified a million times. They're going to have to go through that crap for eternity, nonstop. So know that our day will come. Know that. God is not slack concerning his promise, but he's just not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Well, even though not all are going to come to repentance, we also know that God is going to bring judgment. And he's going to judge the evil, the evil, the perpetrators. He's going to judge that. Oh, I hope that you find some kind of comfort in all this madness. This was, God is not surprised. God saw all this stuff in the making. You have to remember, you know, there's a question we ask. Why do good things happen to, I mean, why do bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people? Because you're living in a cursed world you're blessed if you walk with the Lord, but it's limited. You're not in heaven. You're in the land of the living, which is totally contaminated. Totally jacked up in a lot of ways by the enemy. Because the devil has turned up the flames. He is doing everything he can to, to take as many people with him as he can. And he wants you to ask that question, where was God when this one died? Where was God when that one? You may not have been aware, but he was with him. But Satan wants you to blame God when Satan is the one doing all this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, y'all. There are workers in darkness that are doing this crap. And devil worshipers working right along with them. They think they're going to enter the promised land of the devil. They really think he's going to reward them. Because their pockets are getting fat here. But they have no idea what's waiting for them on the other side. God's got a trick bag for their behind. And there's a lot of surprises for you and me. For those of you who have been victimized, oh my goodness, you got some surprises, beautiful surprises waiting for you. Yes, you do. Remember when Jesus was on the cross, a lot of you wonder, why does God allow the victims to die? Look at what happened when Jesus was on the cross. Jesus had committed no sin. Think about it. Yet he died on the cross for you and for me. But he had to die in order to destroy the works of darkness, take away the power of sin over our lives. And then in order to enable us to overcome sin, overcome emotional scars, overcome the trick bags this, that life and Satan has wrapped around us. The only way for us to be delivered and free, healed, is for him to be resurrected, which he was. But in order to be resurrected, y'all, you got to die. So remember, God did not deliver his son. He allowed him to be mistreated, abused, persecuted, tortured, killed. But, but, it came down for our good. As a result of his death and his resurrection, 
we have the Holy Spirit that helps buffer us through and guide us through life so that we don't get hurt so badly. Yes, we go through, but we have a buffer. He's a pain killer. He's the lifter up of our head. He heals our wounds. He takes the scars out of our memories. He gives us abundant life, joy, peace, love. Uns the love is, is just out of this world. But he's got something. He, as they say in the streets, I got something for you. God's got something for these fat cats that are up there pulling the strings, jacking your lives around. God's got something for them. Oh, yeah. And it ain't going to be pretty. Some of y'all might feel sorry for them by the way they got to go out. But I'm telling you, this is the prayer to pray, y'all. Let's pray that God brings tremendous blessing out of this by bringing class action lawsuits that put their money in our pockets. Hello. While they rot in jail. Mm -hmm. I don't even ask for the death penalty for them because they need to know what it's like to have everything taken from them for a change. That's right. So I ask you, stick, stick with God, y'all. Do not abandon God. He did not abandon you. He put this earth under the dominion of man, which means he gives us free choice to be a blessing or be a curse. That's the freedom he gave us. But intervention is really going to happen when we cross the line. When we cross over to the other side, everybody's going to know what's up. Everybody that's, that's done wrong, their behinds are going to be as naked as a jaybird. And we're all going to see them get theirs. He said, you will behold and see the reward of the wicked. Don't think they're going to go unpunished because they get by down here. This is the devil's turf. Of course they're going to get by down here. But God's got something for them. Mm -hmm. It ain't pretty. Got something for the, de for, for the devil too. Now, I ask you, whatever you do, do not be weary in well-doing. Mm. Do not throw in the towel on God. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God's got you and me. We have to toe the line. We have to hang in there and we cannot give up our faith. No, God is not doing this. The evil that lurk in this world. That's what's getting this crap done. But remember, God's got the final word, baby. And he is the judge of all. God bless you. Be encouraged. And know you will be vindicated. Your loved ones will be vindicated. You watch.